Unsurprisingly, there are numerous movie and TV references peppered throughout the game of Fallout 3. First of all, did you know that there are loads of movie quotes hidden amongst the game's dialogue? For example, after the Galaxy News Radio quest, Three Dog steals a line directly from Mr. Universe in Serenity. You can do that? Can't stop the signal now. A Star Wars reference was snuck into the Mothership Zeta add-on. It's possible to enter the waste disposal area of the ship, where Sally can be found fixing an elevator. Hey, I didn't know you were exploring too. You don't know where we are, do you? And when talking to her, you can quote Han Solo. What an incredible smell you've discovered! No way! Well, maybe a little. One of Bruce Willis's most famous lines from the first Die Hard film is quoted by Brian Wilkes in the Pulaski Preservation Shelter. I know what a TV dinner feels like. And Captain Dusk of the Brotherhood of Steel will tell you... Put any mutie bastard within one mile of me and my rifle and, well, pack it up, troops. Fight's over. This is a very similar line to that from Saving Private Ryan. Just replace mutie with Hitler. Put me and this here sniper rifle anywhere up to and including one mile of Adolf Hitler with a clear line of sight, sir. Pack your bags, fellas. War's over. A different member of the Brotherhood will also make a movie reference, this time to Starship Troopers as he spurs on his comrades. Come on, you if you wanna live forever! The Terminator's iconic entrance is quoted by the slave Prosper during the Pit add-on. Your clothes. Give them to me. Now. Fuck you, asshole! <laughs> Whilst these movies were given small nods that are little more than hidden jokes for players to find, there is one movie series which Fallout 3 pays homage to in a massive way, Mad Max. The original trilogy was a huge inspiration to the game's developers, and probably the biggest tribute they paid to this classic series is found in the art on the back of the game case, which was clearly inspired by this iconic image from the Road Warrior, but the references don't stop there. The designs for the leather armor throughout the Fallout series has always had similarities to Mel Gibson's armor from the movies, in particular, the single-sleeved armor that has become a distinctive look in both the games and and the movies. There is even a random encounter with a character named Mel, who wears a leather jacket and sports an unloaded sawed-off shotgun. In The Road Warrior, Max, played by Mel Gibson, threatens the gyro captain with his shotgun while it too was unloaded. What? How did you know that? When in the lamplight caverns, one of the children will seemingly mispronounce Humongous, but this is actually a reference to Lord Humongous, the main antagonist from the second film. A lot of elements from the Pit add-on are also references to the third Mad Max film. The arena itself resembles the Thunderdome, and the outfits worn by the slaves also resemble those from the movie. This image for the Pit Fighter perk depicts Fault Boy wearing armor identical to that of the character Blaster, and the clothes worn by Mayor McCready of Little Lamplight are also similar to those of Jedediah, even down to the jacket being one size too big. Boys and girls, dying times here. Although Mad Max was a major influence on the game design, it wasn't the only inspiration for the title and other tributes were scattered throughout the world. The quest, The Replicated Man, refers in name, content and theme to replicants from the movie Blade Runner. And during the quest, Finding the Garden of Eden, Fawkes quotes a line directly from the movie. Wake up, time to die. The book, A Boy and His Dog, was also a major influence on the Fallout series as a whole. Dog meat, the vaults, and the blending of the 1950s Americana with futuristic horror all allude to this classic book, and even the glowing ones resemble the description of the screamers from the book. A more direct reference is found in Oasis. Harold calls the tree he is encased in Herbert, because he finds it funny and it annoys the tree. In A Boy and His Dog, the dog will often call the boy Albert, because the dog finds this funny, but but it annoys the boy. 
Mad Max, Blade Runner, and even The Terminator all make some sense to see referenced in Fallout's futuristic wasteland. But what about Lucy from Peanuts? Stay awake when I'm talking to you! In Little Lamplight, there is a doctor called Lucy. Inside her clinic hangs a sign that is very similar to the one on Lucy's stand in the TV series. The person who brought you in said you were talking to a tree. Is that right? Marvel Comics have also managed to find its way into a couple of places in the Fallout universe. First, there's a perk called Adamantium Skeleton, a reference to the metal alloy that's bonded to the bones of Wolverine in the X-Men comics. Someone's been up in their game. Another X-Men reference comes from the Super Mutants, who will echo Magneto's views on human evolution. We are the future, Charles, not them. The Vault Boy image for Nerd Rage bears a striking resemblance to Bruce Banner turning into the Hulk, and the Mr. Gutsy robot will say, I'm starting to get angry. You would not like me when I'm angry. Which is very similar to Dr. Banner's famous line. Puny God. And not to be left out, DC has managed to also get into the game with this Vault Boy picture for the toughness perk, which resembles the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Does anyone remember Lost? Well, Billy Creel's safe combination is 15, 16, 23, 42. The last two thirds of the show's famous recurring chain of numbers. Right, Mary Jo, because this is the 16th week without a winner. The Simpsons gets its own rather strange reference. Some of the radios and televisions in the wasteland are branded as Radiation Kings, and there is a store in downtown DC of this same name. This is the same brand of TV that Homer had as a child. Hi Lisa! Hi Super Nintendo Chalmers! Callahan's Magnum can be found in the ruins of the Citadel if you choose to destroy it. This is a reference to Clint Eastwood's character in Dirty Harry, and is one of the most powerful handguns in the game. Did he fire six shots or only five? But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Wint and Kid are a pair of ghouls who can be found fleeing from the Old Oni underground. They are also the names of the two assassins charged with killing James Bond in Diamonds Are Forever. There are also a number of books which Fallout pays homage to. We already mentioned one post-apocalyptic book, A Boy and His Dog, but George Orwell's dystopian classic 1984 is referenced both in Irving Chang's computer and Vault 92's Overseer Terminal. H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos has made its way into the story found in the personal logs in the Dunwich Building, which in itself is a reference to the Dunwich Horror, a core story from the mythos. And lastly, another literary reference is actually hidden in the Lone Wanderer's birth date. The date and month are a biblical reference to Machai 713, which reads, And the earth will become desolate because of her inhabitants, on account of the fruits of their deeds. A fairly apt description for the Fallout series as a whole, don't you think? Now I'm sure everybody who played the game got that Nuka-Cola is based on Coca-Cola and copies their branding from the 1950s. However, what you may have missed is that Nuka-Cola Quantum is a reference to the short-lived Coca-Cola C2, which was marketed as having half the carbohydrates and half the calories. When compared to regular Coke, Fallout's Nuka-Cola Quantum is almost the exact opposite and boasts twice the calories, twice the caffeine, and the same great taste. That's all the Easter eggs we have time for today, but there are a ton more to be found, so make sure to head over to fallout.gamepedia.com to find out even more and let us know in the comments below what your favorites are. As always, this has been Dash for Curse saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.